good. Hello. Let's draw. Let's keep going on our demon man here. So I'm going to try to just merge him now before I move on to the next step. <clears throat> Yeah, whatever. We're not trying to spend forever on this. Going to do a quick correction to his horns. Hello, hello. been loving all the streams lately? Well, I'm glad. I've been loving them too. I have so much fun drawing. And streaming is a really fun way to give you like a focused burst of work time. good when I'm doing stuff that's like in the sweet spot of a, it's kind of comfort zone so I don't need to do like super heavy duty problem solving which would be really hard to do while talking to people and stuff like that but when it's sort of the stuff that you're used to doing It's something you're not super committed about, you know? It doesn't have a lot of, let's say, restraints on it. Like, it's not a job, it doesn't have a deadline, it's not due at any time. Streaming is a really nice way to just make you, like, commit to the stuff you want to commit to and get it done. Because you just do nothing but work for the couple of hours. And it just feels weird to jump around when you're on stream. Whereas if I was just drawn on my own, I'd be much more likely to be like, ah, that's not the best version of this thing that it could have been, and then start a new sketch or something like that. Which is healthy in its own way, but can kind of get in the way when you're just trying to get through stuff. You know, it's not perfect, but that's fine. Hi, people. Hello.
Oh, damn you. Sorry, I always gotta focus when dealing with these layer management issues. Tempu with the five dollars. Thank you so much, SX Tempu. That's incredible. That's five dollars worth of demon juice. It's pumping me up. I feel great. I'm filled with the hate of the Dark Lord, and I'm made better for it. My art will only improve now that the adversary's vile opprobrium courses through me. Thank you, Six Tempu. canvas larger because I'm going to go in and do some detail passes now. Uh, so I doubled it. I just went up to 8,000, which is going to be fine because since I'm doing details, I'm going to be using small brushes. So it's not going to slow down. But once I'm done, you know, I'll probably take the final size of him, paste it into another document on its own, but then I'm going to revert this back down to 4K to do more heads because that's too big to have the tons of layers that I'm going to have. So it's just a working scale and then I'll reduce it later. My voice is kind of low. One second. That should do it. Hopefully that's not too high. What's on this layer? All right, onwards, multiply layer, and let's carve out some forms. Unless there's something I want to do down here. Let me do a quick couple things on these teeth. Actually, you know what? We could just do it with this as we go. So all I'm doing here, and all I'm going to be doing on this step, is I have my trusty gradient brush. Uh, tons of brush packs that you get will have something like this. Anything will do. It's just any brush that leaves a hard edge on one side and a soft edge on the other. This one is from, who's this from, Matt, M and then the at sign. I I think that that's Matthias Verhasset, if I have his name right. I think this is from his ancient brush pack from like 2008 or something like that. So um, if you're interested in trying to get the exact brush, uh, you can go Google that. I can't redistribute my brushes because I've paid for some and not paid for others. And I don't remember which ones are which, so I don't want to steal from anybody. Um, so all I do with this for a detail pass like this on skin is that because it's a gradient, right? I just do cross hatching like I'm drawing. I just do this 
always going in the same direction. And look at that. It looks like little wrinkles in skin, right? It's that easy, nothing complicated. Well, the complicated part is drawing with the, um, with the dexterity that you would have cross-hatching with pencil, right? That's the hard part, doing that right there. But if you have any experience doing cross-hatching in pencil, it's not a big deal. The trick here, as in every step that we've done, is to not get distracted thinking that, oh, I'm doing wrinkles, I'm doing wrinkles, I'm creating surface detail. No, as soon as you think that way, you're gonna mess it up. What you do, what you think about while you do this, is you make new forms. So you continue to play, you add information. So here we are, we're zenning out, we're painting wrinkles, we're relaxing. So to you, dear stream viewer, please have pencil in hand. Please take this opportunity to draw today. brush so that every stroke is a slightly different color. Just because it's fun to be a crazy person.
if an area gets too dark and stops jumping out contrast wise I'll just tap it with the eraser a little bit Just slightly softening an area that had too much contrast for my taste. Man, I got a lot of tea leaves in my tea today.
Sometimes I'll just start carving around the big forms instead of trying to do surface wrinkles and things like that. I feel like wrinkles get a bad rap. I don't understand why. I find if you, as long as you respect the primary forms before you get to them, I think they're a very useful way to gain access to a very fine grain level of fidelity to the form that's in your mind. As long as it's making you blah, drop down another level in the dream of the thing that you're drawing, how could that be bad, right? If it increases the feeling of verisimilitude and authenticity to you, the artist, that's super useful. Gives you a new level of things to assess and to make nice for the viewer. It also doesn't really take that long. I mean, you'll see. I'll be, I'll be doing this for like 45 minutes and that'll kind of be enough. And when they're on their own layer, you can always just turn them on and off or decrease their intensity. Fifty two pickup says if you want to make a living at art, how much should you supplicate versus drawing how you would like to? Um, if your only concern is making a living, do nothing but supplicate. If that's really the only factor in the conversation, just do absolutely whatever other people want. But I personally find few artists are actually interested in that. Yeah, don't be fooled. It is, uh, it is quite easy to 
find yourself doing what other people think they want all the time and doing nothing that you want to do. And it can get so bad that you will forget what you wanted to do. It will slip through your fingers like sand. You'll experience many nights and days of confusion. You'll wonder why you ever enjoyed it in the first place. This will seep like bubbling pitch back into the art. And you will come to resent it. You will ask it over and over and over again. What do you want? What do you want? And the heart will laugh and it will whisper back. What do you want? And your inability to answer will drive you mad. So try to avoid that if you can. going to put a soft light layer over everything that I'm doing to continue to vary the colors a bit. So very low opacity with my color variation speckle brush. I'm just going to pick something like the local color of whatever area has gained my ire and just rub this over it. Can vary it at my leisure as well. just flatten the brush for doing this very flat plane that recedes. This is a very subtle thing, but sometimes it behooves you to just have things fall back and get broken up a little bit so that the detail requirement does not escalate exponentially. Make it so that you can never call it done.
pretty subtle difference, but. It helps. All right, back to doing this. Back to relaxing. Tea leaves just went down my throat. Stephen, have you thought to write a book teaching something about drawing? Uh, not really. I mean, I don't have like a particular subject, focused subject that I would want to teach. Not at the moment. I think that what I have to offer as a teacher right now is more about project-based work that focuses on the student, general mental stuff. I don't really have any interest in a book format, art book about a particular topic or anything like that. Videos, I've done plenty of videos teaching art topics. When I'm doing these wrinkles in the shadows, I'm using the brush in the opposite direction so that the gradient goes in the opposite direction. So like I said, when I'm in the light, I'm doing the gradient this way. Uh, nope. My bad, because I was working light on dark. I'm doing the gradient this way. In the light, that makes the grid look like light is coming from above. And notice that I was drawing the hatches always from left to right. And then when I'm in the shadow, to reverse it, to indicate the bounce light, I go from right to left. And that reverses the gradient. It makes it look like the light is coming from below. Easy peasy. But don't get caught up on techniques like that. And those things mean nothing if you are not connecting with the content, if you're not on the form. In fact, they will hurt you if you are not actually caring about the shapes that you're making. Just excuse me while I live out my dreams. Just get lost in some nice little sub forms. Oh, you know, just doing all the stuff that your art teachers tell you not to do. <laughs>
Sometimes the wrinkles advertise for, to me that the forms underneath them need to be better understood. So not changing layers since it's a multiply already, but just get in the airbrush and back to drawing medium sized shapes like usual. The soft light layer that sits over this is ensuring there's some variety in everything that I put down. Because it's putting random color variations on everything underneath it. squinting my eyes as I paint right now to look through all the details that I just did and see the basic shape. Well, not the basic shape, it's really more like a secondary shape that I am restructuring. If I can make it look interesting while my eyes are severely squinted, there's a good chance that something is going to read when I open my eyes up. down the middle of what I did there. Just getting a little dark in the middle of the form. this line of flesh color that comes out of the head onto the horns to read in the thumbnail. So I'm just zooming way out and hitting it strong enough that I can see it clearly when I'm really zoomed out or down here in this tiny little postage stamp size thing in my navigator.
back to these. Do not like using that brush when pressure sensitivity is on. Art and creation tethers me to this world, or else I'd just float away into madness. Well, more than I already have. Yeah. I, uh... I've been around artists long enough to know that you are not kidding. You are probably terribly serious about that. I know a lot of y'all are straight up crazy. I know that happens to artists. I mean, hell, that's part of why I made the channel. My heart goes out to you. I mean, shut up in my chat too, but my heart goes out to you. A lot of sympathy and a lot of rage, sending you lots of sympathy and lots of rage. Emmanuel Godson says, I had an artistic nervous breakdown in art college. I'm diagnosed schizo today and love painting. Yeah, man. It shows. You didn't need to say that. I 
I think all of our hearts got you. I think most artists know what it's like to have a bit of a nervous breakdown. Much sympathy for your mental health struggles, my dude. Now, uh, maybe a little bit more painting, a little less typing in the chat. Steven, how much time and effort do you usually invest into composition and gesture before you sit down and get to the core effect? These, these here, you seem to have just winged it. Uh, yeah, it depends what the, what the task is. I winged it on these because composition and gesture were just not the most important goals for these. My goal for these was to get an impressive, varied, funny page of just a wild assortment of different faces and types for demons that could be in pandemonium. So it was more about getting to a, a developed little finish kind of quick. It wasn't about overall gestures or anything like that. Maybe it should have been, but it was just up to me that it was not. But on another task, another design task, where it makes sense that it's all about gesture, I will spend the vast majority of my time there. It really does always just come down to what is the prompt? Like, what are you actually trying to do? That's why it's so important to do project work instead of just work in abstract. Otherwise, you can always talk yourself into doing something else instead of doing the thing that you're supposed to be doing, you know? Joseph, how are you? Joseph Mazzigliano is on the building. Joseph Mazzigliano, ladies and gentlemen, definitely not watching from work. Definitely, definitely not. Final details today, people. Let's just wrap this guy. No need to turn this one into a week-long painting. Just use all our, our old bag of tricks. This old bag of tricks. You know, the bag of tricks, where all of the tricks is, I've practiced this for 16 years, that bag.
I'm especially interested in putting the little wrinkles in the places where the specular reflection is, because that's where it tends to create the most form. Automatically. Those little high contrast areas are primed to stand out. Bag of tricks include the smooth shading every time. Turning forms.
Why is my mouse not working? drawing every cell of this creature? Not at all. But hopefully I can get it so that it kind of feels like I am. But this is actually not a heavy lift detail-wise at all. It'll be interesting what all of these little details do to the next step. I'm definitely in the realm of things that are just for me now, though. No one's gonna see these on the sheet that this guy's gonna go to. This is really... Just because it makes me happy to do this stuff. You'll be able to see this stuff if you see just this guy, but he's going on a sheet with all the other heads. He'll be too small. For anyone to really see all these wrinkles and all that. But like I said, there's value to how they drag you further into the form. No matter what, there's value to that.
I love painting this way. It just feels like drawing. It's just all little hatch marks and building bigger shapes out of that. Instead of finicking around with big graphic shapes. Remember to do the medium sized forms on some of these. I forget sometimes because I'm hack, 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 She hates when I use a pit bull beat to self-deprecate. She really doesn't like that. get lost with all these hatches sometimes. And I'm varying my stroke direction between if I'm in the light, if I'm in the bounce light. It's madness. In case you were wondering, it's madness. Hey Sienna, I'd love to know what you think about artists like Giger and the overall grotesque art. I know it's cool, but I have something more to it. I mean, I love it. Giger is one of my biggest inspirations. Him, Ernst Fuchs, Mobius, Alex Gray, all those guys have influenced me very, very, very much. I think it's great. Is there something more to it? I don't know. I think that comes down to each one of those artists individually. Some of them, I bet, would say, no, it's just art. It's just art. You know, it's just what I like doing. But I don't know. If you look at someone like Alex Gray, I think Alex Gray would claim there's, there's much more to it. Right? Alex, I'm not going to speak to what Alex Gray thinks he's doing, but I'm pretty sure I've seen him make claims like he's channeling God and things like that when he makes paintings, so... Um, or the Godhead or consciousness or whatever. You know what it's like with all the non-dual stuff. But um, I think he would make a more... My guess is that he would make a more extreme claim than just uh, it's what comes out of me or it's just art. So I think it comes down to the individual artist. That's the great thing about art. It can be whatever you want. That doesn't make it true for anybody else, but it gets to be whatever you need for you. And that's the jam right there.
Could paint those teeth for a subjective eternity, I'll tell you what. I will tell you what. Like when you are trying to express yourself, because most artists say, even though they are drawing ugly things, they are not expressing the ugly side of the human. They find beauty in the ugliness. Is it true in your case? Um, for me personally, I feel like I say this a lot, but I, what interests me about art is form is the illusion of form, the invention of form and the conveyance of form. Um, I don't worry about what is beautiful or aesthetic or pretty. Um, I don't even really worry about if my art looks good. That's all too vague for me. I just ask myself, are the forms interesting? That's what I like. And it is because I have gain some insight on what I personally like and want out of my art, that is one of the things that allows me to focus instead of being pulled in a million directions, right? There's a reason that I'm not painting this like Monet would paint it or something like that, because it wouldn't satisfy my personal desires, my own personal artistic taste. And uh, yeah, I don't understand them. I understand them intuitively, but I also understand them just... I can say them, and that helps. I would advise to anyone who feels confused about what they are doing or what they want to do, try writing it down. Try, try actually saying to yourself what you like about art, what you want your art to have in it. It's hard to do, it is, it definitely is hard to do, but art's not easy. Well, to be clear, art is easy to do. It is hard to think about. <laughs> it has a lot of mental traps and a lot of mental confusion. The doing of art is always easy, even if you're convincing yourself that it is not.
anywhere where the wrinkles got too intense, just tap, tap, tap with the eraser until they step back into subforms and then everybody's happy. Hi James, hello. Yeah, thank God for Lo-Fi Girl. I'm making the Lo-Fi beats available for people like me who have no musical talent and can't make their own music for their streams. Unlike James Gordon Murphy. He could just make his own damn music. All right, so we got some wrinkles in there and now we are going to, actually, you know what? I'm not ready to move on because I want some final juicy core shadow ones right next to these boulder-like core shadows that I have going on this furrowed brow. Just a second here. Just a second here, while I earn the International Association of Official Concept Artists Award for Best Design of the Year with Yellow Guy. Don't mind me, while one of the main cast from The CW's New Girl calls me up on stage to receive the official Badass Concept Artist of the Year Award for Yellow Guy. Don't mind me. People who are in the know know that an embarrassing amount of that was actually true. Schmid from New Girl actually did host the Concept Artist Association's yearly awards last year. <laughs> It is not just you who thinks it looks like the Grinch. In fact, if you look up here in my layer stack in the top left, it is officially called Grinch. parents if you really want them to be uncomfortable with your career decisions what you do now is you make a color dodge layer and you reverse the system so now I'm gonna do the netting the opposite direction for each of the light areas and now we got the highlights going baby now our work is eternal now there is no escape from this prison of our own making.
Now the nightmare dungeon is a panopticon of pain, baby. And this painting is my minotaur. Look, you only pick this up in key areas where the specular reflections are. You don't do this. You don't do this everywhere. It's gonna look like you put a freaking net over the thing. This is all young Steven wanted to do. Paint some good looking wrinkles. Did he have to go on a 16 year detour to understand form? Maybe. But now he's back. Childhood dream achieved. Painting those wrinkles. easier than he thought it was going to be. At least there's that. I forgot to save this whole time. You got to save. Remember, you should spend as much time saving your documents as you do working on them. Should be a 50-50 split. If you work on something for two hours, you save it for two hours. It's that simple. You're going to regret it if you don't. I'm only doing this in the one area where it's got a glitter. Here's the check that I always do is I make it full screen and then I zoom in on just that. And I'm like, does my eye go from one side to the other? Does it feel like maybe I zoomed in really close on some other painting that I like? I always ask myself that. Does this give me the feeling at all of zooming in on a particularly good spot of some painting that I like? That's one of my litmus tests. Right now, when I look at it over my little OBS feed and it's smaller, yeah. Yeah, it's giving me that a little bit. The eyebrows at the bottom are a problem, but they haven't really been painted yet. But I'm rolling the form the way that I like, so. That vibrato was truly inspiring. I'm glad you think so, James. That's right. Yeah, well, that's the, that's my product right there. That's why I won the Grammy for best Grammy winning song. Yeah. And the Grammy for best Grammy winning song goes to Steven Zapata for stream performance. Oh my god. I can't, I can't believe this. Oh my god, I just need to catch my breath. Wow. Uh, holy shit. <laughs> I don't know what to say.
Yeah, it's the most possible meta award. The gra the Grammy for best Grammy winning song. I'm surprised they haven't gone there yet. I don't know, I don't watch the Grammys. Maybe they do do that. Ah. Oh yeah, I like that. That part came out kind of juicy. It pleases us. Okay. Let's spread the love. Johnny Gonzalez, I'm glad you like them. I'm glad you like those wrinkles. You know, we got to remember why we got into it as kids. And when I was a kid, I wanted my work to have the little details. That's what I wanted as a kid. And it turns out that's not easy to pull off. video of, Gra of Grammys, yeah. In my mind, I'm not like, when I'm doing a spot like that, I'm not thinking, oh, I'm catching the top edge of these wrinkles. That's not what I'm thinking about. That's what I'm doing. That's the mechanical act that I'm doing to draw. But what I'm actually thinking about is this shape. Let me do that in red. That shape of the specular. I just happen to be hitting it with these little hatches that align. that align with the wrinkle lines. This is a kind of fun you can't pay for, people. This is a kind of fun that you only get to have if you do it. not going to do this level of care and lingering on anywhere but the face. Oh man, we really, I got to get around to doing those eyebrows a little bit. All right, I've been dragging my feet. Let's uh, hit some stuff down here. Downside implication. The implications. Leave the flesh.
and start doing some of the other things that will benefit the picture. Ah, radical concept. Do things that will benefit the picture. I like the way you dedicate yourself to the art, the time spent. Working with this sometimes gives me an impression that you have to be immediate to be professional, and here I see the opposite. Yeah, I mean, it's not like you don't have to be fast on jobs sometimes, right? Like, I can't deny that, but first and foremost, you have to do good work and just you can't rush that. Especially if you're starting out, there is so much to be learned from spending a very long time on things. There's things about the structure of anatomy and organic forms and the effect and feel of light that can really only be understood a hundred hours into something, you know? And it's very valuable to interface with those things because once you get them after being on the other side of a hundred hours, it's much easier to imply them um, at the beginning of the next drawing because you get them, they're internalized. off that ever so slightly. Woo, I'm a crazy person. All right. Mm -hmm. Mm
of them. Uh, I can do that. Nope. All right, let's ask yeah, screw it. Let's merge it all. Whatever. It's my little world. What do I care? See if I care. Famous last words. All the edges on this ear are way too hard, so I'm just... Knocking them back with the mixer brush. Helps slightly. What's merge? I don't use Photoshop. Also still a new bit. Digital? Oh, it just means I've merged all the layers, so I got rid of all my layers. I'm just painting it opaque now. Or um, everything is all just one solid painting with nothing separated. All right, enough procrastinating the eyes.
No messing around while you do that, man. No talking. Hold your breath. You can't mess around while painting eyes. It's not a time for fun. All right, even though I'm at the approaching a high level of detail and all that, try to not let that affect me and always just paint over stuff and draw viciously, violently. Paint the way a pig eats, as Soroya said. Or was said of Soroya? Try not to get caught up no matter what happens. What do you look at in the histogram? Uh, for stuff like this, nothing. That's more for work. silly to add the silly cherry on top of this face soften some edges first I'm using right now. This I'll do on another layer in case I don't like it. So dumb. That means I gotta do it. I'll even do a I'll even be a freak and put a cast shadow on the brow from it. Always be trying to ruin your painting. You know, a good goal to have is to make your painting completely unlikable. Really good, really good goal for an artist to have. I think it's going to be a running theme in Pandemonium that all the demons have really thick eyebrows with lots of flyaways. Stupid. <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Ah, yes, dumb stuff.
another 20. in front of me. I am your dad and you will respect me. It's only adding to the Grinch vibes, too, which I like. It's like, what were you inspired by for this demon? The Grinch, mostly. You know, the Grinch from How the Grinch Stole Christmas. Yeah. That's what. Yeah, Necrovall's got it. It's like if the assumption was that they... If the assumption is that they were generally humanoid before the fall, any human feature is on the table. As you can tell, I take my projects very seriously and I take paintings super, super seriously. Yes, yeah, so everything needs to make perfect sense to me or else it's not worthy of my divine brush. So of course, I've thought this through and nothing has gone into this without being vetted by my incredible designer's mind. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. That, I mean, that's the dumbest thing I've ever painted. That is great. It's a brave new world now.
what brand and model are you using as a graphics tablet? It's a Hueon. I don't know what the model is. What is this? The WH1409. Lord, deliver us from these incredible eyebrows. Michael, may your flaming sword strike some sense into this ignorant painter. God, shine your divine light on your servant, Stephen, and cast out of him his bad taste. Cast out of him his bad taste. Out of you! Out of you! Leave bad taste! Leave forever! Leave only an empty vessel of good taste! Mm -hmm. Alright, what do I need to do before I decide to wrap this? I just gotta do a little something more on the horns. That's really the problem. Maybe I want to do something more in the eyes. Let me give them a little bounce light underneath. Do you think that if I want to improve my painting and drawing skills, I should do digital sculpting or traditional sculpting? Uh, probably traditional, if you can at all bear it. Because digital sculpting can oftentimes feel more like painting than traditional sculpture as such. can't get off this face. I just put too much fun into it and now I'm reticent to leave it. Sculpting in ZBrush is like, since you're doing it with a pen and you're just like stroking all over the picture, it feels more like painting than sculpting with clay a lot of the time. 
you can still think and form and gain those benefits from doing it, but you just need to be more aware while you do it then. this thing. Alright. Just keep getting distracted. <laughs> Alright. 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 Alright, I'm getting punchy. I'm lost in the sauce. I've got to get out of the proverbial sauce and get into my focus. Dang it, I'm still not doing it. I'm still doing the dumb, dumb nonsense. All right. I'm just not going to work on those horns too much because this whole situation is going to get wildly out of control. Oh, hi, Puffy. Hello, doggy.
All right, I gotta stretch my hand for a second because I feel myself sliding into just wanting to finish instead of making it good. Mm. Stretching this old hand. Yeah, yeah, Fran, I, I like the colors and values that are going on there, but I'm getting lazy and I'm not constructing the forms as I go. Just making the shapes. Lucas says, how do you prevent yourself from falling into just wanting to finish your painting or drawing? Like I was saying, I just try to notice what that feeling is. Just try to look at it very directly. Just recognize it and then see that the desire to rush is just a discomfort, a feeling of restlessness, which is characterized by kind of mental fogginess and a bit of a creeping sensation up and down the back. And just look at that and recognize moment to moment that that is the rushing. That is the feeling of wanting to finish instead of being with the picture. That is what that is. And then realize, oh, it's nothing. That's, that's nothing. That's just a feeling. And I'm free to do something else. The careful observation of that mental coordination for most people, saps it of its energy. Freeze one from the reactive feeling that you must 
do something in accordance with that feeling. You're already drawing. You don't need to do anything. Do you think having a sketchbook is necessary? No. It's useful for most artists, but it's not gonna be useful to everybody. I would be slow to assume that you are someone for whom it is not useful. I would only assume that after much careful investigation. But it is, of course, a possibility. Specific forms on the horns because I calmed down. be just enough. Hmm. 
Hmm. Might want to restructure some of that, but. All right, just gonna do some quick final adjustments here. So we're gonna do a soft light and I'm gonna separate the hue of the specular reflections, that is to say the highlights and the midtones. So I'm just getting something that comes off noticeably greener Tapping the areas that are the speculars. You have to be very definitive here about the parts of the light. When you do this. is also somewhat grouping things because it ever so slightly raises the values of the areas that you touch. I'm going to get a warmer tone. And the half tones that are right around those, I'm just going to tap those, make them browner, redder. dragging a little bit more variety out of the color grade. It's probably gonna look too extreme to me because I'm so used to seeing it the way that it is, but this will go a long way. Especially because stuff like this always becomes ridiculously more subtle in the final images, when people see it on other monitors, in videos. Just hauling out the variety instead of everything kind of graying down from all the work that we did. Let's push some of that purplish color back into some of these areas. Barely anything, truly. And hmm. And 
let's do a quick levels. So I'll pull the lights up until I lose detail in them and then pull it back a bit. So there you can see it's obvious that I've lost detail, right? There all the detail is there. There's no area in the wrinkles where anything blows out or anything like that. So I'll drag it up ever so slightly to where I lose no detail in those areas. You can also bleach it out a little bit if that's the look you're going for. That can often give you like a traditional painting kind of a look. Because a lot of traditional paintings, the way we're used to seeing them on the internet, they're bleached out in the lights. creepy <laughs> the extra creepy version of this painting we'll just give it the slightest little boost just gonna click it on and off see where the contrast difference helps and where it doesn't help I try not to go too far with that stuff. Look good in black and white. Yeah, everything holds together. And if we wanted to, we could, could select everything merge it, copy, select the contents of the layer, copy those, then undo, get our layer stack back, but we still have the thing in the clipboard. So here I have it all merged while still having all of the layers underneath it. And then I can just do like an unsharp mask on this. to get everything to pop ever so slightly when it's teeny tiny. I'll look at it zoomed out actually to do that. So if you're gonna see it like that, filter, sharpen, unsharp mask. Just enough to get a little graininess on the core shadows would be nice. test I look at it like that full screen on my big monitor does it look cool on its own could it be like a background or an icon or if I zoom in could this be could I pretend this was something out of some painting I didn't do that I think looks dope yeah I guess I would think it looks kind of dope always got to kind of disassociate just that one spot though everything else is pretty rough all right we're done here that guy's finished. And I don't know yet if I'm gonna have them like that or on the black background. If I do the black background, they'll probably all be on a black background on a page like that. Yuck, yuck, yuck. I wonder if I would ever 
get away with one more little touch. You ever been neurotic? Anybody here know what it's like to be utterly neurotic? Maybe. direction is green. I'm lost. There it is. Oh, that's quite green. Ooh, how green do you want it? That's the question. And then we blew out a lot of detail, so just drop that to like and see what I want that final little form pass on there so freaking subtle all right I think we're it's time to put the pen down even. All right. Oh boy. All right. All right, everybody. I'm a little, uh, I was supposed to leave a little bit ago, so I'm going to run. Thank you for being here again. There's our sheet so far. Here's our demon boy. Detailed out with all his little thingamajobs and stuff and things like that. I gotta check him out on a lower quality screen before I call him done. But there's our work on him. There's our Grinch. On to another one next time. Um, thanks everybody for being here. Let me see what's up in chat. Sorry I was caught up, but I really wanted to just finish this guy in one more sitting. I didn't want to spend much more time on him. Hi Eva, sorry you came to the end. No problem people, bye Joe, bye Lucas. This is the pot of the man that paints and draws demons, that's right. That happens. All about that neurotic lifestyle, aren't, aren't we all? Aren't we all? All right, everyone. I will see you soon. Probably more demons next time. And if you're drawing today, thank you for drawing today and good luck with all the art that you're gonna do today. Remember, it's all yours. You get to do it however you want. You get to do whatever you want with it. So sink into it and enjoy. Bye everybody. <laughs>